Uh, today we're joined with Jo Bingham, who's actually one of our client liaison officers. She's also an amazingly talented watercolour artist. So Jo, what are we going to do today? We're going to be um, talking about and demonstrating an introduction to watercolour. So we're going to be covering the colour spectrum wheel, um, a little bit about equipment and what you'll need to begin to start um, painting watercolour, and something about colour mixing, because it's a really um, essential part of knowledge about colour, how it works, how they mix together, and what effects you'll get on the paper. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Great. And for those at home, uh, what do they need to get started for this introduction to watercolouring? So if they actually want to start watercolour painting, they will need some watercolour paper because it is different to other papers. Mm. Um, they'll need some watercolour brushes mm. and some basic watercolour paints um, and a uh, jam dried water. That's it. Great. Let's get started. Okay. Jo, so this is what we're going to be um, doing today. So it's got the colour spectrum wheel. Um, we're going to be drawing a couple of pieces of fruit and we're going to be doing some colour mixing. So the reason that we do, we work on the colour spectrum is because we need to know a little bit about colour, how it works and how we can use it as artists to get the best effects in our paintings. So the thing about the colour wheel, I'm sure that you all know that the yellow, um, red and blue, um, they're called the primary colours and they're called primary because you cannot, you cannot mix them. So they come as... So they come in a tube in many different shades of um, red, blue and yellow. And uh, the purest colours are sort of in the middle. They're neither towards the blue shades or towards the warm shades. Um, and then you get what you call the complementary colours, which are the secondary colours, which is orange, violet and green. Um, they're called complementary colours because they are contrasting. So that when you're doing your work, if you have a predominant, if you're doing a painting with predominantly green, by using some red in your work, it can really make it pop out. So, and when you mix these colours together, you get rich, a rich diversity of colour, which again is much more interesting than if you just use colours out of a tube or out of a pan. So, by experimenting, you know, using your colour wheel, you can you can take your painting to the next level quite early on. So which is what I'm going to be showing you. Colour mixing, um, it's good, especially if you have a, li a limited range of colours. If you can do just a little chart and put your colours up there and then start um, diluting them as you go across so that you have a good idea of the colour range that you can achieve with the colours that you have. Um, and also start doing a little bit of colour mixing as well. And again, write down what it is that you're doing so that you have a quick reference you can keep this to the side of your work and you know what you're doing and you know you have a good idea of what it is that you're trying to achieve and how to achieve it so when i'm when i'm teaching because i'm also an art tutor when i'm teaching we always start and do a color spectrum ourselves the reason we do it is because it's a really good way to start off painting if you've never painted before just to paint a triangle um, it's a really easy way to get to start understand the feel of how watercolour works, how it feels on the brush, and what it looks like when you put it on the paper. So the equipment that you'll need, as, as I said in the intro, so I actually use um, a plate. I use a china plate because I'm not a fan of plastic. Plastic tends to make the paint um, go into sort of little puddles, whereas if you use china, it just works so much better with the paint. Um, and you can pick these up really cheaply from an op shop. This is actually, I think, a dip plate, so it's ideal for painting watercolour. The brushes that you'll need, um, you can buy synthetic ones, but they need to be really soft brushes, because if you buy anything that has hog hair or bristle brush or anything that has a, um, a bit of texture to it, it doesn't work. It will scratch your, it will scratch your paper. It will make your paint go in streaks. So you need really soft watercolour brushes. Um, a nice soft pencil and um, the paint that you'll need I prefer tubes for the simple reason that it's easier to make large amounts of paint but you can also use it in very small amounts it dries out and you can reuse it um, and when you if you've never bought paints before I would recommend probably going and buying a student range to start with um, because they will give you the results that you need without spending a fortune Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to put my palette there. I hope you can see it. So I've already put out 
um, a small dab of paint. Try and avoid making a big pool of paint to start with because that's quite wasteful and you'll find that you don't, um, you don't need a whole pool of, pool of paint. So we're gonna go for a middle brush. Now this is called a round brush. It's about medium size and it has a point on it because when you're painting triangles, you need to, you know, it's about, you know, being a kid again. I'm trying to keep in the lines. So I want a nice point on my brush. So you dip your brush into the water and I think we'll start off with yellow. So again, we're not gonna mix the whole lump of paint. We're gonna go in. Again, it's not like the, the poster paints or oil paints or acrylic paints where you use white to get your tones. You use water. The more water that you have in your paint, the paler the color. So I'm gonna mix up a reasonable amount of paint. Now watercolor paper, which is what I've got on my board, it's a particular sort of paper and it's got what they call size on it. So it absorbs a certain amount of water, but the paint stays on the top. So if you painted on cartridge paper, it would just suck all of the water out of it and you would, it, it just ends up in these really weird colors. So that's why you need to have. And when you, when you start painting, make sure that you get it in the right order. So red goes opposite green, violet goes opposite yellow, and orange goes opposite blue because that's how, it, that's how the color spectrum works. So I've got, I've got my brush nice and loaded. So you, they use that term. If you ever see it, loaded means that there's lots of paint on your brush. Load your brush with paint and just start stroking it on the paper. So we're gonna fill in the middle section first. And then we're gonna start quite carefully going along those lines that I've pre-drawn. If you find that you've used too much water, just use your brush and, and you know, put your brush flat on the paper and then just knock it off on your palette. And there we go. First triangle is in yellow. So we'll just do this triangle and then we're gonna move on and we're gonna paint some fruit. I choose fruit because it's something that we're all really familiar with. We're familiar with the shapes and the colors. They're easy to draw and they're often primary or secondary colors. So it's, again, it's a really good, I would really advise you if you're interested in following through and trying some painting, try fruit. It's, yeah, you, you'll find it's a really nice intro. Okay, so we're gonna just do the orange one and then we're gonna move on and do some drawing. So again, it's the same thing, brush any water, just stroke the paint from the edge of your, um, the lump that you've squeezed out of the tube. And the same thing, load your brush up with paint. Actually, I think my, my orange is a little bit it's a bit too red, so I'm just gonna mix in a bit of the yellow. Okay, so I hope that just gives you a little bit of a feel for how the paint works when you put it on the paper. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw a lemon. So again, lemons are, are really nice, even shapes, nice and easy, you're familiar with them. So I've got a nice soft pencil. Again, when you're drawing with watercolor, make sure that you don't choose a pencil that's too hard because if you have a pencil that's too hard, too hard or you press too hard you're going to make a channel in the paper and your paint's going to go in there so nice soft pencil again just keep looking at what it is that you're drawing and just draw a rough lemon shape okay 
that'll do. See how quick that was. Right, now before you start painting, make sure that you have violet and your lemon yellow ready to use. So I'm actually going to use, it's called a cadmium yellow hue. It's a student color, so it's cheap, um, but it's a nice bright yellow. And I've got a ready, ready made um, violet here that we're going to use. Okay. So we talked about washes. Um, a wash is your undercolor. So whatever you paint always has an underpainting. So I'm actually going to switch to a bigger brush. So my underpainting, I want to be yellow. So this time, I'm actually going to paint the paper in just water. This, by doing it this way, I'm avoiding getting any lines. I don't want any lines when I'm painting it because there are no lines. So you paint your whole lemon in water and then you go into your paint. I'm using the same brush at this point, but I'll switch back in a minute because I then want to paint my lemon in yellow. Now, I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Can you see how, um, how smooth that goes when you put the water on first? it just gets you a lovely sort of even effect um, which is ideal for what I'm trying to paint. So back to the round brush. This time I'm going to take some of my yellow paint and I'm just going to mix a little bit of violet with it. So I'm basically mixing the complementary colour. When you look at shadows you very rarely see black. You'll see reflective colour or you see um, uh, you see a shade darker of the colour that you're actually trying to paint. So, but you'll find that if you mix the complementary colour, it just gives you a really rich, um, a rich tone. So if I if I just drop that into the bottom of the yellow, you see it's a rich brown, uh, browny purpley colour, for want of a better phrase. <laughs> So if I then just stroke that round the bottom in the direction of the curve of the lemon. If you find that you think, oh, that's a bit dark, just go back into your uh, lemon yellow again and then just stroke the yellow over the top and just knock the color back a bit. So this is where you start getting your tones in. So we're going to keep it simple. There we go. There's just a very simple lemon. So the next thing we're going to draw is an orange. Again, very familiar. Um, and But it's still good to have a really good look. Whatever it is that you're choosing to draw, you know, have a good look. And uh, and have a good, you know, work out what it is that you're trying to draw. Because it, it makes life easier and it makes drawing easier. Okay. So I'm going to hold it in this hand and we'll try and... Try and draw it around. Okay. Again, you'll notice that I never draw really hard lines. I'll, I'll sort of, um, they're quite like feathery lines. And I do that whatever I'm drawing because it makes it much easier to correct. Because very few people can draw something straight off. I'm just thinking, yeah, that's absolutely what I'm looking for. Okay, so then we'll just do the little bit at the top. Okay, that'll do. That's roughly orange shaped. Right, okay, so I'm just going to put that down there because we want to work on the colour. So it's quite a, it's a warm yellow. So should I say it's a warm orange? So it's, even though I'm going to use a, a, a ready-made orange colour. I'm actually going to put some yellow in it because I, I want it to um, reflect the actual orange. Okay, now I'm going to do exactly as I did before. I'm going to wet the area of the orange. So 
So it's not soaking wet, but it is damp all the way around. So that when I then go and put my paint on, hopefully it'll spread beautifully. There we go. Look, if you put the paint on, look how it just spreads. I don't have to do anything. And this is also the beauty of watercolour paper. If you did this on cartridge paper or paper that's designed for acrylics or oils, it wouldn't do that. So we're just going to use the end of the brush. We don't want to be doing that. We're just stroking it on with the end of the brush. So it's drying off quite quickly. You'll find in this um, in this climate that uh, we're under lights now that it actually dries. Your paint dries quite quickly, so you do have to work quite quickly. Okay, now the opposite colour of orange on the colour spectrum is blue. So I'm just going to put a little bit of blue out. So I've actually got this is called phthalo blue, which is a um, it's quite a sea blue. So we're just going to mix that with a little bit of orange. And we're going to put, just like we did with the lemon, we're just going to stroke it around the bottom, which will give us our shadow at the bottom. And again, you can see what a much more interesting when you actually you probably can't see it but it's actually quite a similar color to the, to the shadow areas of the of the orange so and again when you're when you're trying to make look, something look three-dimensional don't just put it on there and think okay well you know that's it go back with your brush and actually just try and sort of you know stroke it round because it gives you a much more realistic appearance. So now I'm just going to go back with a little bit more of the orange. Because the paint's still wet, so you can still play with it. As soon as that um, paint starts drying off, that's it. You, cut, you have to leave it then to dry, to, for all to dry before you can do any more work on it. Okay, I think we'll leave that there for the orange. Right, the last one we're going to do is we're going to be working on a, a red capsicum. Again, slightly more complicated, but they're just such beautiful, beautiful vegetables and awesome to paint. Okay, so this time, so again, same thing, holding my hand and um, What we're really trying to achieve is just so if we can get some of those little bumps at the top. And this time I'm actually going to leave some areas of the paper white. So even when I put my water on, I want to leave a couple of the areas of the paper dry. Okay. Okay. So this time we're going to use a beautiful rich red, but we also want to put some green out as well because the same thing, we're going to use the complementary colour to get the shadows. So if you think, oh, she's put a lot of paint out there, it's okay because next time we go and paint, you don't have to just clean the wells of your palette. So, you know, the dishes, leave all the lumps of paint there because you'll be able to reuse them. Right, just getting that colour ready. Okay, so same thing as before. Okay, now as I said, I'm going to leave a couple of the areas if I can, a couple of little bits dry paint, dry paper, sorry. Okay. Yeah. 
I personally love the color red. I think it's very bold and it's very eye-catching. So that's another reason to choose a red capsicum over a yellow one or a green one because they're very eye-catching. Okay, now I'm just going to leave a couple of those areas to try and get the highlights on the skin. Okay, we're nearly done. So again, when you're painting something like a capsicum, it's predominantly um, upright. So when you're doing your your brush strokes, do them in the same direction. So do your, you know, and it gives you that impression of, you know, being quite tall. Whereas if I did my brush strokes acrosswise, you think that looks a bit strange. So always go in the direction of whatever it is that you're looking at. Okay. It's very simple and red, and then I'm just going to mix a bit of green, like I did before, into the red. And we're going to put a little bit of that at the bottom for my shadow. So that gives the impression of being quite dark, but it's not black. So it complements and contrasts, but doesn't kill the color. Okay, now the last thing that I would advise you to do is to find all the colors that you have. So whatever you've got in your color range and experiment with them, do some color mixing, work out what it is. So I, I will demonstrate so I'm going to use the green, and my green is called Windsor Green. So the first little box, I'm going to do it as thick and as dark as I possibly can. So the next little box, I'm going to mix a little bit more water with it, so it's not going to be quite as dark. And then the next box again, same thing, mix water. And then the last one I'm hoping to be mostly water. Now you can see how by doing that, look at the range of colors that you've got. That's just one color, one tube or one pan, and you can get all of those colors. So I would recommend that you do that with the colors that you have. So I'm not going to go and do that with all of mine because you'll get bored out of your mind. And the other thing I wanted to demonstrate is, again, is how um, by doing some color mixing of our primary colors and our secondary colors, you can get these beautiful, rich, purpley browns, pinky browns, um, which are so much more interesting when you come to do your colors or your dark colors. So this color that I'm just about to show you is a mix of all the primary colors. So now if you think that, if you thought about mixing blue, red and yellow, you would never think that you'd get this lovely sort of rich pinky brown. So the next one I'll do is I'm going to mix the, um, the secondary colours. So that's a green, orange and violet. Sometimes obviously it'll vary depending on what, whether you use a cool shade or whether you use a, a warm shade and how much of each colour that you put in. But again, you can get some very dark. So again, you see that's that's the mixing of the secondary colors. So when you're painting in watercolor, try and avoid using black if possible. Unless, of course, you're painting something that is black. You know, if you're painting a black Labrador, you probably use black. But for everyday scenes, for, you know, buildings, flowers, um, fruit, still life, anything like that, try and avoid using black. Use your mixtures of your dark colors. So mix 
ultramarine blue, which is quite a dark blue, and um, a green or a violet, um, because they'll give you some lovely rich colours and they will add to your painting rather than detract because the thing about black, even though it's a very useful colour, it can suck colour out of a painting. Your eyes will go straight there and it, will, it won't enhance the other colours that you've got in your picture. It will, it will detract from them. So the one last thing I will show you is just, again, if you use, this is the, the um, primary colours mixed together. So again, if you just paint a square like that, and then just drop another colour into it. So I'm going in with a direct blue, and I'm just going to drop it into the corner, and just watch it spread. So I think we'll leave it there, because I think you can do that when you do your own. So thank you very much for listening to me, and um, happy painting. I hope you have a... Um, a great time enjoying playing and experimenting with the paints that you've got. Um, thanks. Bye for now.